All right, so directing. Uh, <laughs> directing is a skill that takes a fair amount of time to develop. Uh, probably the easiest entry uh, into the job of directing is really to be a member of a studio crew or control room crew uh, for a fair amount of time so that you can listen to a director and get some solid practical experience under your belt. It's very rare and would be highly unusual for someone just to instantly step into the director's role. The very best directors have experience, the very best directors have experience in all of the production jobs. Uh, they have been uh, gaffers, they've been grips, they've been camera operators, they've floor directed, uh, they've run the teleprompter, they've run the audio board, they have uh, done technical directing. Uh, so, the, so the very best directors have a very good understanding of the entire production process. Um, and so, and so, you know, what I would encourage you to think about if that's your goal is that you need to get as much practical experience as you can, but that experience needs to be broad-based across a number of different production positions. Do you follow that idea? Uh, you can't just be a camera operator for five years and then go be a director. It's not going to work very well. Okay. Uh, the guy who trained me, uh, Wayne Nesbitt, the guy who trained me described directing as running in front of a train. Uh, either you are, for live TV, uh, you know, you're either in front of the train, leading the train down the tracks, or the train is running you over. There's no in between, there's no timeout, and there's no do over. Uh, it's very different than film directing uh, or single camera video work, uh, where you have opportunities to sort of do it again. Does that make sense? Because the way it's done in film is scene one, take one, action. And they do the scene. Scene one, take two, action. And they do it over and over and over again until they get it right. And then they write it down, you know. Scene one, take 52, that was the good one. That was the good one. And then ultimately those types of films are then edited together, right? But you have an opportunity to fix things. Live TV is live TV. There's no time out, there's no stopping. So I think Wayne was right, you know, it is. It's a lot like running in front of a train and you really have to keep your head in the game. You have to concentrate, you have to concentrate. And for a typical 30 minute newscast, hey, you're concentrating really, really, really hard for about 30 minutes. That's what you get paid for, to be as perfect as possible for about 30 minutes. Does that make sense? So how many of you have ever watched a professional athlete like a ski racer or somebody like that? Uh, especially downhill racers, right? They go from the tippy top of the mountain all the way to the bottom and it only takes them like around two minutes, right? And they're flying along at 50 miles an hour or faster, but what they are getting paid for is what? Two minutes of perfection. Two minutes of perfection. It's that intense concentration. And that's kind of like what it's, that, that's similar to what it's like when you're directing live programming. You really, really have to concentrate. Makes sense? And the more experience you have, the better. But I'll tell you this, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the business, it doesn't matter how long you've been a director. When you put on the headsets and master control is counting down and you're going live in 10 seconds, you get butterflies, you get anxious, okay? The palms start sweating a little bit. That's normal. Make sense? All right, so one of the things I do uh, when I'm directing is that I need to, before the show, I, I need to sit down 
with the rundown, the script, uh, and the uh, font sheets, or just the video clip information, I need to sit down and I need to do two things. Number one, I need to visualize the show. Visualize the show. Quite literally what that means is I am picturing almost the entire show from beginning to end. Does that make sense? It's almost like I'm looking at a blank TV screen and I'm going, okay, what will I see first? And then what do I see next? What do I see after that? What's after that? What's coming up after that? And so forth and so forth and so forth, all the way through. And that takes a little bit of time and it takes a little bit of concentration. This is not something that you can typically do in the control room because the control room's what? Is it really noisy and stuff's going on and producers are coming in and out and right? So oftentimes what I do is I take my written materials and I would go to a conference room or somewhere, just anywhere quiet, uh, just to sit down and visualize the show. And in fact, I'll go back to the ski racer. Have you ever seen a ski racer before the race and they're at the top of the mountain? and they have their eyes closed and they're doing this. You ever seen that? Well, that's what they're doing is they're visualizing the course all the way through. Two minutes of perfection, 30 minutes of perfection or as close to it as you can get. The next thing I'm gonna do, the second thing I'm going to do, sort of while I'm visualizing the show is I'm going to mark my script. I'm going to mark my script. So, quick question. Take a look at your script and rundown and tell me what is the very first thing that happens in this program? What's the very first thing that happens? What's the first thing the viewers at home will see? What is it? Okay, it's a show open. It's a pre-recorded video clip. It's a pre-recorded video clip, yes. It's a pre-produced little show open. All right, little package. Uh, and so, is there a script for that? Is there any script for that? No. But what I will do is I'll take a piece of paper. I'll take a piece of paper, just out of my notebook or whatever, and I will create a piece of directing script that would look like this, all right? What's the run number? Huh? 100. 100, all right. And it's a video clip, yeah? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna have to say is stand by this thing and get ready to roll this thing and so forth. So what I'm going to do is mark the script in such a way that I know what to say. All right, so I'll make what's called a roll box, the word roll with a box. All right, what machine contains this video clip? Look at your rundown. What machine? It's a video tape recorder. Is it A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Which one is it? It's A. All right, so I'll put the letter A in there like so. Does that make sense? That, this, this little marking technique, this little marking technique is a shorthand. It's just shorthand. Here's where this gets a little weird. When I see that, do you know what that says to me? That says standby tape A. Full track is coming on A. And then as we approach the beginning of the show, Roll tape A, track, and take it. That's what that says to me. Isn't that sort of nuts? That's why it takes practice, okay? But if I can do it, you guys can do it too. In fact, on Thursday nights, the student-produced newscast is entirely directed by students. I don't direct it. The students do. If they can do it, you can do it too. So, standby tape A, full track's coming on A, roll tape A, track take. Now, some people go, well, Dr. Rutterback, Dr. Rutterback, wait, hold the phone. 
how come you just don't write all that down? Why don't you take your little pen and write down standby tape A, full tracks coming on A, roll tape A, track take. How long do you think it would take me to mark a script if I literally wrote down every single thing I was going to say? All day, <laughs> right? So, and the other thing about writing down too much is that all of your focus goes where? Under the piece of paper. Does that make sense? Where's the TV show? It's in the monitors. You have to split your attention between your script and the monitors, right? Do you remember when I was rolling that video clip about the Sikorsky story, right? How many of you saw me do that in the control room? And it was almost like this little ball ballet sort of a thing, right? Roll it, track it, and then I was waiting for it in the monitor before I said, take it. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I have to be much more active. I can't just simply sit there and read. I have to be able to go from my script to the monitors, from the script to the monitors, from the script to the monitors. Does that make sense? Now, tell me folks, everybody at home is now watching this. Everybody at home is watching this little pre-recorded open, right? Carefully examine your rundown and your scripts and tell me what happens next. When this ends, what do we do? When that ends, the answer is in the script and in the rundown. No, take a very close look. Do we go to a camera first? Look at your script. Is there an on-camera introduction to that package? Is there? Yes, there's an on-camera introduction to the keys package, correct? Yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and mark the actual paper copy of the script together. And I'll show you how I would do this. I would get out my handy dandy Sharpie I think every director in the world uses Sharpies. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just like the perfect size. Uh, this is not an advertisement for Sharpie. Sharpie has given me no promotional. Okay. So, do we know what camera this is on? Does it say in the rundown like OC1, OC3, or anything like that? No. All right. So, what I'm going to do is at the top of this page, I'm going to write O, C. I'm going to write O, C. Okay, O, C. And what that says to me, what that says to me is that when this tape over here, when that tape ends, when that video clip ends, I'm going to be transitioning to a camera. All right? What happens next? I transition to the camera and the anchor starts talking. A Marylander has thrown his hat into the ring for president. Good evening, thanks for watching. What happens next? It's in there, what is it? The very next thing is that package, right? It's another pre-recorded video clip. So what I'm gonna do should sort of look familiar. I'm gonna make a roll box the word roll and a box. I'm going to make a roll box. Who can tell me which machine has this video clip? Huh? B. It's in VTRB, although it could be a DDR for that matter. But I'm going to go ahead and put B in there. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick what's called a roll cue. A roll cue. A word in the script that when I hear it, I'm going to activate that video clip. Does that make sense? So I cannot wait for the anchor to completely finish 
that introduction. If I do, there's going to be this weird lag. All right. So to prove this, to prove this, I want you to just read that last paragraph for me. It starts Alan Keyes. Go ahead and read it. Alan Keyes, the two-time unsuccessful state senate, says the race for president is one who intends to win. Standby tape B. Full track is coming on B. Roll tape B. Track and take it. During that entire time, you're what? You're like st st staring in the camera like, and you're looking down and going, am I off camera yet? I really need to pick my nose or whatever. D do you know what I mean? So I have to say all that stuff before my anchor's done with the intro, right? So I'm going to back it up a little bit, and I'm going to pick the word the, and I'm going to circle it, and I'm going to draw an arrow. So the word the is my roll cue. It's about two lines back. Do you, what? Yeah, state senate says the. Do you see it there? So when I hear my anchor say that word, all right, that's when I'm actually going to give the command to roll that video clip. And so if all goes well, if all goes well, the video clip will be ready at about the exact second he's finished. Do you follow me on that? Yeah? Sort of, kind of? All right, so now, um, so let's go ahead and try that. Why don't you go ahead and start with uh, a Marylander, start at the very top of it, all right? Standby tape B, full, keep reading. Standby tape B, full tracks coming on B. Roll it. Track it and take it. Makes sense. It's going to be really close. You follow me? And the longer you work with a particular anchor, the better you get at predicting almost exactly, you know, how far back you have to go. And so it almost appears to be, at least to the viewers at home, seamless. All right, so now I'm in this pre-recorded video clip, which is halfway through 120. When that video clip ends, what do I do? Is there an on-camera concluding remark at the end of this, at the bottom of the page? Is there an on-camera concluding remark? Yes. And so that's called a tag, and I'm going to write in real big letters, tag, tag. Now quickly, does this story keep going, or is this the end of it? It keeps going, so I'm going to draw an arrow that says, hey, doofus, you know, keep, look out, man, this story's not over with, and I'll turn the page, and sure enough, there's a little bit of script left, a little bit of script left. And what I'll do, do you see that pound, pound, pound thing? Do you see that? Sometimes it's pound, pound, pound. Sometimes it's dash, three, zero, dash. Those are old school. Those are old school marks to indicate that's the actual end of this story. That's the only way you know that you actually have the entire story. All right, because occasionally sheets get left out or they fall out in the uh, count, uh, when they're putting these together. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just amplify that so that I know that that's actually the end. All right, now, you ready to do some directing so far? Let's direct so far. I'll do it, but you can kind of follow along. So it's almost 6 o'clock. Everybody's in position. I've got my intercoms on, right? I've checked my microphones. I've got my cameras all set. Everything's ready. And in my headset, I'm going to hear Master Control saying, you're going live in 15 seconds. You're going live in 10 seconds. All right? Am I starting to get nervous? Yeah. All right. 
but I've got my mic on, and I go, okay, guys, standby tape A, full track's coming on A. Five, four, three, roll tape A, track, and come up. Does that make sense? All right, so Master Control has just counted me in. The studio is now live. Everybody at home is looking at what? This, right? Everybody at home is looking at this. But I'm not looking at this. I'm not sitting there enjoying the music and watching the show, no. You know what's going through my head? Where am I going next? What's the next thing? All right, so while everybody at home is watching this, you know what I'm saying? We're coming out of this to camera one or three or whatever. We're coming out of this to camera one with her mic and a cue. We're coming out of this to camera one with her mic and a cue. This ends, and I'm going to say, take one mic and cue. My anchor is going to start reading the top of 120. Now, am I listening to my anchor go, a Marylander's throwing his hat into the ring for president? What am I, what's going through my head? What's next? What's next? Stand by, tape B, full track is coming on B. Stand by, tape B, full track is coming on B. I hear the word the. Roll tape B, track and take it. We are now in the video clip of 120. Do you follow that idea? We're in that video clip. Everybody at home is watching that pre-recorded video clip. What's going through my head? When that video clip's over, what am I going to do? Right? We're coming out of this video clip. Back to camera one for a tag. Have her mic ready. That video clip ends, and I'm going to say, take one mic and cue. Keys joins three other GOP candidates for president, talk show host Pat Buchanan and so far. Does that make sense? So I am not, believe it or not, I'm not watching the TV show. I am not watching the TV show. I'm kind of here and I'm there. I'm here and I'm there. I'm here and I'm there. You have to be that active. In fact, oftentimes I would finish a show and I'd go home and my mom would ask me what was on the news tonight. I don't know. I was on camera three a lot. There were two Vosats and we had a special guest in the third block, but uh, beats me. Why? Because I'm not watching the show. If you're an audio operator, if you're a technical director, if you're a graphics operator, doesn't matter. If you ever catch yourself watching the show, punch yourself in the face. Okay, just do it. Punch yourself in the face. I'm watching the show. Poof. Don't do that. I'm not kidding. That's when the mistakes happen, when you start watching the show and you're like, oh, this is really good. Oh, oh, ready one, take one. Oops. Now you had a question, what was it? Why? You're sort of following. You know, you got one half of your consciousness is sort of listening for it, right? So I'm glancing down, glancing up, glancing, you know. But you're right, you know. Sometimes you get false doubles on things, right? You get two words like the word the twice in a row. But I think here, you're pretty safe. You're pretty safe. All right, so let's go to the next story. So we're on camera, and then we get to the top of 125. We get to the top of 125. Are we still on camera? Are we still on camera on the top of 125? Yeah, so I'm going to say O, C. Then it says take V, O. What's that mean? Then it says take VO. What does that mean? Is that a pre-recorded video clip? Yeah, it's voiceover, right? Remember, there's three kinds. VO, VOSATs, and packages, right? So what do I need to do? I need to make a roll box. 
I'm going to make a roll box. What deck am I in? Or which machine? A. And I'll pick the word has as my roll cue. Okay. So at the top of 125, I'm simply staying on the camera. I'm staying on the camera, but I'm going to be saying, hey, standby tape A, it's silent. Roll it and take it. And so the anchor in here is just talking away. Under the deal, smoking will be allowed in bars, hotels, and motels. But everybody at home is looking at what? That pre-recorded complimentary footage. Right? Now, does this story end at the bottom? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and amplify that. I'm going to amplify that. Again, this is just a little shorthand that you're using, a little shorthand that you're using just to jog your memory as to what to say. All right? Let's go to the next story, 130. What's going on with this? Is it, first off, is there any, are there any pre-recorded video clips with this? No. This is break time for a director. This is what we call a reader. This is a reader because the anchor just is doing what? Staring at the camera and reading. Hey, break time. So, I'm just going to do OC at the top. Pound, pound, pound. Done. Now, remember that if I know which camera I'm going to be using, if I know that I'm going to be using camera three, I can put it on there. Does that make sense? You know, I imagine the NBC Nightly News, they're probably using the same camera protocols pretty much every night. And so I'm sure the director could probably mark their script pretty cleanly. All right, what happens next? Go to the top of 135. What do we have here? We have an on-camera introduction to a package. We have an on-camera introduction to a package. So it's OC. I'm going to make a roll box. What deck am I in? You sure? You better be sure. Which one? B. B. Because I'll tell you something. If I roll the wrong machine, if I activate the wrong machine, I'm going to get the wrong video clip, right? And so you might be doing a story about football and you've got video of ducks crossing the road. That's not good, all right? Because when you get to the story about ducks crossing the road, you'll probably have footage of what? Something else, <laughs> right? And once the video clips get out of whack, I have actually seen this happen. Video clips will get out of order, okay? And one time, I guess, it was, yeah, it was. It was WUSA Channel 9, Washington, D.C. And the video clips got out of order, and the anchor got very upset and said, we will be back when we have our act together, and they faded out. They literally went to black in the middle of a live show so that the video clip operator could get things straightened back out. Think about that. If you're the number one newscast in the nation's capital, is that the kind of mistake that's going to be taken lightly? Probably not. I don't know. It was probably just an honest mistake, but it does happen. It does happen. Did people get tired of the things like that? If you did it two or three times in a row, then yeah, I would fire you. I would. If I was the senior production technician or the operations manager, I'd say, hey, you know, I'll cut you some slack. I'll cut you a lot of slack, in fact, but you know, if you're going to shoot me down three times in a row, uh, maybe you should reconsider your career objectives. Or maybe we can find something else for you to do, like, I don't know, editing or something, where you can't completely destroy my newscast. <laughs>
But nah, I imagine, you know, it's, it's the bigger mistakes that people get fired for. Uh, and you'd have to make those mistakes pretty consistently. Accidentally knocking over a $250,000 high definition camera that's brand new. That's a bigger mistake. Offending your special guest. You know, you've invited someone to your studio for an interview. <laughs> Don't offend them. Top of 145, what's going on? Top of 145, what's going on with that? It's a reader, very good. So what would you put at the top? OC, and then just amplify those hash marks. Pound, pound, pound. Sweet. Uh, top of 150, what do you got? Same thing, sweet. Easy, easy. But remember, if you know which camera it's on, you could write one or two or three or whatever. Does that make sense? All right, top of 160, what's going on here? Okay, yeah, this is a VO, but does it begin on camera? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to OC the top of it. I'm going to make a roll box. I'm going to pick a roll cue. I think I'll use the word Virginia. Can anybody tell me which machine has this video clip? Eight. Huh? Eight. You sure? Mm -hmm. No ducks crossing the road. You better not have ducks crossing the road or I'm going to blame you. All right, now does this story end on this page? No. Now, so I'm going to draw an arrow just to say, hey, go, keeps going. Don't forget. All right. So let's go to the next page. Uh-oh, uh-oh, do you see there where it says on cam? That means that the producer wants to drop the VO clip at that point. Does that make sense? So we need to be back on camera for that word where it says meantime. So I'm going to uh, put OC and kind of draw a little arrow there just to say, hey, we need to be back on camera. We need to be back on camera where the script says meantime. Do you see that on the second page? Right, so the producer wants to be on that video clip you know, from one point to an end point. Make sense? All right, so let's go to the top of uh, 198. What's this? This is a teaser. When we come back, we have naked pictures of naked people doing naked things. Naked. Stay tuned. Uh, this is a teaser, but is there a video here? Yeah, it very briefly begins on camera, but there's a video clip. Uh, I'm going to use the word stay and give me the deck or machine A, B, C, which one's this in? You sure? Absolutely. All right, no ducks crossing the road. All right, now take a very close look at your rundown and tell me what's next. Is this the end of the block? This is the end of the block, so we're about to go into a what? A commercial break. So, I'm going to write in great big giant FTB. What's that mean? Bingo. Fade to black. Fade to black because Master Control is going to be expecting to roll uh, to play their commercial break at that point. Because remember, I don't have the commercials in the control room. Master Control's got all that. All I have to do is say, hey, we're getting ready to fade out. Get ready, Master Control. Although Master Control's on the intercom. And so they've been hearing me do this thing the whole time. They're watching the show. Uh, and so they'll, they'll be ready, and I'll say, all right, guys, three, two, one, fade to black and roll your break. Now I've got, what, about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes to sort of 
take a breath. But what's going through my head? What's going through my head always? What's next? All right, guys, after the commercial break, we're coming out of it to camera two with our mics. So it's constantly trying to stay in front of the train. Do you follow that idea? You have to stay in front of the train because there's no timeout, there's no do over. You know, think about the Super Bowl. How many people are watching you? Millions. Millions and millions and millions, right? And so you want to try to be as perfect as possible. And sometimes, you know, we will take the time, something like the Super Bowl, of course you would do this, you rehearse it. You rehearse it, you rehearse it, you rehearse it, and then the day of the show, you just hope it all goes well. Uh, now, sometimes it doesn't always go well. Uh, do you remember a certain Super Bowl where half the stadium, the electrical power went out? Oops, too many lights, <laughs> right? Uh, who's in charge of the gaffing crew? Too many lights. <laughs> Oops, sorry. My bad. I wonder if someone got fired over that, but I don't know. All right, so in a nutshell, in a nutshell, this is how you mark a script. This is how you mark a script, in a nutshell. Now, you don't need to be in a control room. You can do this at home. You can sit with a rundown and a script and sit and visualize the show and make your directing marks. Okay, what, what am I doing here? All right, am I, I'm going from into this video clip and I come out of that video clip and I come into a camera with a microphone and then I'm going from that camera and a microphone into another video clip. I'm coming out of that video clip into the camera and the mic. And so you're literally visualizing the show all the way through. Does that make sense? Now, over time as a director, over time as a director, these directing marks, you will modify them to whatever suits your needs, okay? It's not like I could walk into a control room at ESPN pick up a script that someone else had marked and be able to direct, okay? If I haven't gone through the visualization process, if I haven't actually marked the script, I would have a great deal of difficulty picking up someone else's script and being able to direct, unless that person was a former student, <laughs> quite seriously. That's probably the only way I'd be able to do it, is if they were still using my method. <laughs> but over time, over time, you modify it to whatever suits your needs, okay? Just as if, you know, I would not expect a director from ESPN to be able to walk in, pick this up, and be able to direct it, uh, unless they're a former student. Does that make sense? And it's one of these things that becomes uh, sort of your own way of doing things. It has to make sense for you. But I cannot overemphasize the importance of the visualization process. If you don't take the time before the show, if you don't take the time before the show, unless you have an, a very simple show, if you don't take the time before the show to visualize the show, your show is going to crash. It's going to crash. Because then you're just going by luck and the seat of your pants. And you're hoping it, you're very much hoping that you've got the skill level depth to be able to pull it off. And sometimes that happens, but sometimes it does not. All right? The other thing you have to be as a director, just to give you some more keys to this, you have to be as calm as possible. Because if you start getting anxious, what do you think is going to happen to everybody that's on the intercoms? They're going to get anxious and they're going to start making mistakes. 
All right, so you have to be as calm and as collected as you can. You're nervous, sure, but you shove it all down in your foot and forget about it and let your foot go tap, tap, tap and wiggle around, but your voice needs to be very steady. If you're going to make a mistake, make it with two feet. Never ever be tentative on the headset. Uh, ready, re ready camera two, take it. That doesn't sound very commanding. Ready camera two, take it. Damn it, I meant one. All right, if you're gonna make a mistake, make it with both feet. Do you follow that idea? All right, now, a couple of other tricks. Uh, as you've listened to me over time uh, this semester, you've heard me direct now quite a bit. So think about it. Audio cues follow video cues, right? Ready camera one with her mic. Yeah? Stand by videotape A. Full track is coming on A. Ready graphics with music, right? So you're telling your video source first and then your audio source next. Yes, no? Yeah, so let's write that down. That's important. Video first, audio second. Video, then audio. I used to always forget the audio cue, always. And the guy who trained me, Wayne, would stand behind me. And one time he had a ruler. And every time I forgot my audio cue, he'd hit me in the head. Not very hard. He just pap. It's pretty funny. Uh, you know, but ready camera one with her mic. Ready graphics with music. Standby videotape. It's silent. Video then audio. Video then audio. Video then audio. Now when I'm talking to the cameras, what word do I use? Do I use ready or standby? Now I'm talking to the cameras. I always use ready. Ready one, ready two, ready three, right? Ready camera one, ready camera two. So I ready my cameras. Uh, when I'm talking to playback, when I'm talking to the person who's in charge of my video clips, what do I use? Stand by. I am verbally separating. I'm verbally separating and you have to be as consistent as possible. All right? But I am verbally separating those two groups or those two tasks. So I ready my cameras and I tend to tell my video clip operator, hey, stand by tape A, stand by tape B, you know, stand by DDR, C, whatever. Does that make sense? So, the neat thing about directing is that you're the boss, all right? You're in charge of everybody else. You should aspire to be the director. You don't want to be a camera operator all your life, okay? You don't want to be necessarily, unless it's really the thing you want, you know, a graphics op all your life. But some people, that's what they do. I love graphics. I simply love graphics and that all I want to do is graphics. Same thing happens with audio. People get into audio and it's like, all I want to do is audio. I love audio. But I think if you really want to advance in the business, go for being a director. Go for being a director, but realize that you're going to need hundreds of hours of experience in all these different jobs. 
as soon as you have felt that you've mastered one job, you say, hey, I want to learn graphics next. I want to learn how to technical direct next. I want to assistant direct next. If you have a very good understanding of the entire production process, then, you know, I think you'll be ready to direct. And the more time you're on the intercoms, the better. The more time you have on the intercoms, the better. Now the cool thing here at Eastern is that you have the opportunity on Thursday nights to actually do this. All right, we run two directors every semester, every semester. Plus now uh, with the sports uh, communications, got a relationship going with sports that Dr. Gomez is working on uh, to do the games, uh, different sports games. Uh, there's even more opportunities. So here it is. Take advantage of it. We're laying it in front of you. Does this make sense? Yes, no blank. All right. Is everybody clear about what's happening after Thanksgiving? Absolutely clear as mud. All right. Have a great break. Tell mom, dad, uncle Bob, and whoever else shows up, Hello from Dr. Rutterback. Don't save me any turkey. No, that's fine. You can wish me a happy birthday. It's on Thanksgiving. I'm doing Indian food. We're doing Indian food this year. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to have Indian. All right, see you later. If you're